What if I told you there was an easier method for managing garden pests that didn't involve chemicals or emptying traps, it worked around the clock, and it was awesome for the environment? What I'm describing already exists in nature. I'm talking about beneficial insects. Essentially, good bugs that eat the bad ones. I'm going to demonstrate a concept that I use to encourage beneficial insects to battle the pesty ones in my garden. I'm also going to demonstrate how everyone watching this video can use AI to determine how to use beneficial insects in your own unique garden. And I should point out, not all beneficial insects eat the bad ones. Sometimes beneficial insects make the environment hospitable to the ones that do. And a perfect example of that is the relationship between bees and wasps. In my garden, it's specifically mason bees and parasitic wasps. You see, mason bees for North America were the original bee. There are over 140 species of mason bees in the United States alone. Yes, honeybees are nice, but they've only been in North America for a few hundred years. Some accounts say that Native Americans referred to honeybees as white man's flies. This is because they were brought to North America by European immigrants. I would add also that honeybees tend to be a little bit more grumpy because they have a big colony to protect, whereas mason bees lead fairly solitary lives, and perhaps that's why they're less up for a fight. If you learn anything useful from this video, please comment and subscribe, and consider joining where you're basically buying me a cup of coffee. Encouraging mason bees to pollinate in my garden was the first step in establishing a healthy ecosystem in which other beneficial insects, like parasitic wasps, could do their work. Now, to expedite this process, what you can do is install a mason bee house in your garden. Ideally, you'll mount it on a southeast facing wall, and then you'll fill it up with hollow bamboo cane. On this part of my property, I use a mason bee house made by Crown Bees. They were generous enough to send me this one to use in this video. And it came with two mason bees that were ready to go to work. And go to work, they did. Literally, the next day, they were out collecting mud to seal off the eggs inside these bamboo tubes. And that leads me to share a pretty mind-blowing fact about mason bees. Solitary mason bees lay an egg inside the hollow bamboo, and they leave a little nectar loaf for the young to eat when they emerge. And then they do the thing that gives them their name. They make a mud wall, sealing in the egg. And then they repeat the process, usually one egg per inch of tube. Here's the kicker. When they emerge, they have to emerge in reverse order to that in which they were laid. How did those little baby mason bees figure that out? Okay, let's talk about parasitic wasps. So next to mason bees, parasitic wasps are a gardener's best friend. If you like growing tomatoes or squash and don't like dealing with tomato hornworms or squash bugs, well, you need parasitic wasps. Studies suggest that there are over 1 million species of these very interesting little insects. You see, they're hyper-focused on the, the pest insects that they like to eat. One species of wasp focuses on tomato hornworm, another focuses on squash bugs, and on and on it goes. My specific problem has to do with squash. One of the areas that I have struggled over the years is with insects that like to prey on my squash plants. And so I have been aggressively trying a new solution. And that is, I have been planting any place I intend to grow squash on my property in advance, I plant Queen Anne's Lace. Queen Anne's Lace, which is the great-grandmother of carrots, that plant is very attractive to parasitic wasps, specifically the type that like to eat vine borers and uh, squash bugs' eggs. It also is attractive to another insect called a tachinid fly. 
and those have a similar habit of loving to feast on the eggs of vine borers and uh, squash bugs. So you're starting to get an idea as far as the complexity of this solution. Uh, obviously you can see the role that mason bees would play in this. They need to encourage the flowers and the, the spread the pollen and that sort of thing. And then once the Queen Anne's lace is healthy and thriving, well, it brings in the good guys to take care of the bad. Okay, so you might be familiar with some of the all-stars of beneficial insects. I'm talking ladybugs, praying mantises, lace wings, ground beetles, tachinid flies, parasitic wasps, on and on the list goes. Well, it's something that I am going to be working very hard as each year goes by to improve the ecosystem that makes it possible for each of those beneficial insects to, have, to make a home here in my garden. Now, I mentioned at the outset that AI can be helpful in this process. Here's how. Okay, suppose you're dealing with a specific pest in the garden and you want to try to get rid of it. What you can do is open up something like uh, ChatGPT, Google Gemini, and they're basically glorified search engines. But this is how you could do it. Are there any insects that eat tomato hornworms? Yes, several beneficial insects help control tomato hornworms. Brachinid wasps are particularly effective. They lay their eggs on the hornworm and the larvae feed on it. Lady beetles, green lacewings, and certain types of predatory bugs also prey on hornworm eggs and larvae. Planting flowers like dill, fennel, and yarrow can help attract these beneficial insects to your garden. You get the idea. So you have a little dialogue, in this case with ChatGPT, and you get an idea for some of the beneficial insects that can help solve your problem, and then you chat with ChatGPT about ways of attracting them to your garden. So there you go. That's kind of an overview of the concept. Obviously, I couldn't make a video that covers every pest. This is more a, a video about how you can do it, how you can think in terms of bringing in beneficial uh, insects, and uh, either deterring the, the, the pests by plants that you grow or by the insects that you bring in. Um, monoculture doesn't do that a lot of times. Monoculture is, is a recipe for, well, for garden pests, quite honestly. I'm curious if there's anything that you do on this topic in your garden that you have found to be particularly successful. I would love to hear about it. I love to read the conversations that happen in this very unique group of people that follow this channel. Uh, there are a lot of smart, very helpful people, and I think we can all benefit from their wisdom. So please comment and let us know what you do that works in your garden. And as always, if you like this video, you might like these. <laughs>